everyone, Mr. E here with another 3D printer review, and in this one we talk about the last year that I've spent with the Modix 120Z as we try to help you figure out if this is the right printer for you. So before we dive in, I just want to thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for many, many more 3D printer tutorials, reviews, and other videos coming soon to Mr. E's Digital Classroom. Now, if you're watching this video, it's probably because you're either window shopping and fantasizing, or you're in the market for a big 3D printer. And I'm happy to say that we're not quite spoiled for choice, but there are a lot of options on the market. Raise 3D is a really popular brand, and even brands like Molespot, Creality, and Prusa all now make pretty large volume 3D printers. But I'm sure, as you've noticed, few come close to the size of the Modix, especially when you put build volume next to price. But is it any good? Is this a good idea? Is this a top-notch printer, and is it the right printer for you? Well, hopefully I can share some insight and support to help you figure that out. Now, at the time of making this video, Modix offers five different printers, starting at around $5,000 for their big 60, all the way up to their big meter for about $13,000. Those prices do not include optional add-ons, which you will definitely be checking off for at least a few of them. And I'm gonna to try to share which ones I think are definitely worth it. I also wanna point out that this is a 120Z, which falls right in the middle of that build volume and price point for around $7,500 before options. And this does have a few optional extras. This 120Z has the build volume of 600 millimeters by 600 millimeters by 1,200 millimeters, or roughly 24 inches by 24 inches by 48 inches. And it is the vertical companion to the 120X that has the same measurements horizontally. But this is also a year old. So this is the 120Z version three. Recently, Modix released the version 4, and I can say they added quite a few features that I think would make it significantly more user-friendly and higher performing than this one, but I think my experience with the version 3 would still be relevant and help you kind of determine what you need for your own space. Now, as with all Modix 3D printers, I received this in a kit of about a million pieces, and that is the first thing you need to consider. This is not like a partial build, semi-assemble, pop on the gantry. This is a full build from every tiny little bolt to tiny little washer to harness clips and everything. And it's a big project. I've built many different printers before, and I'm not going to say that it was any more challenging than your typical 3D printer kit, just bigger which meant I needed an extra set of hands and a couple little things just due to the massive size of the thing. So if you've built 3D printers before or even other CNC and robotic equipment, you can probably handle it assuming that those projects went well. If you've never done anything like this before, just know that you are getting into a massive project. Now, Modix did do a pretty good job at creating step-by-step -step instructions with both written instructions, pictures, and even 3D models, and that those, of course, help you through the daunting process of building your 3D printer. I will say, at least at the time when I built mine, that the guide was sort of generic. Photographs were taken on one of their printers, which I think is the one that they probably sell the most of, and it's not the one that I had. So every now and then, the photo would just not match. But the written words and the 3D models kind of helped me work my way through it. And again, it wasn't too bad compared to other 3D printing building projects. But again, it, it's a project. Now, after building the printer, there's a lot of tuning and calibration. Don't just think you're going to be able to drop some G-code on here and push print. You got to make sure that everything's aligned, everything's set, everything's balanced. And again, Modix offered quite a bit of support to assist you with that. This uses a duet style printing interface, which is pretty common in the 3D printing world. So there's also a lot of documentation for all of the duet system outside of Modix. So you can find lots of different guides and forms that kind of help you figure that out, which I needed because personally, I've run into quite a bit of issues with my network uh, in terms of getting this connected to the Wi-Fi. That's not really a Modix issue. That's more of a my network issue. But a lot of the different types of calibrations and updates and things are mostly done through their web interface. 
You can, of course, insert an SD card and run different macros and G codes and everything through that as well, which is actually how I typically use this just based on my own environment. You can also use pretty much every slicer on the market because this is a pretty standard FFF style 3D printer. Uh, there are existing profiles available for both Prusa Slicer and Cura. I actually made my own profile to use Cura Lulzbot Edition just because I have a lot of other Lulzbot, so being able to just switch between them with ease was cool. And I also prefer the way that the dual head is set up in Cura LE rather than the typical Cura, so that's my personal preference. But again, I need to emphasize that there's going to be quite a bit of calibration and tuning even after your first 3D print. I mean, just think about how big the bed is, so it's going to work really great over here and not so great in that back corner, and you have to make sure that everything is square, everything is communicating, everything is operating correctly, at least to get it to the printing level that I would assume you'd want your five, ten, thirteen thousand dollars 3D printer to do. And while we're on the subject, let's talk about price. I do think there's a bit of a misconception that because this is a relatively expensive printer, it is a relatively high-performing industrial 3D printer. That's not really true. You're mainly paying for the size. I would really call this a very, very, very large hobby 3D printer before I compared it to the Stratasys of the world and the industrial 3D printers. I'm not saying this can't perform at a pretty impressive rate. I've seen some awesome prints not only come out of my own printer, but also Modix's on forums and the internet. So I know you can dial this in to print rather well, but really the print quality is a lot closer to my Prusa Mini, my Lulzbot Taz Sidekick, or even like a Creality CR10, just much, much, much bigger. Now you do get some nice higher end features with your purchase that are similar to industrial printers like this lovely customizable touch interface, you have filament runout sensors, auto bed leveling using a BL touch, but again these are available on a lot of cheaper smaller hobby printers too. I will say the version 4 has some nice upgrades like a really big emergency stop button that's super handy, a much nicer screen that's at adjustable height, an upgraded filament spool, and linear sensors rather than just the typical runout sensors, which means it'll detect feed rate, so it'll detect jamming, not just when you run out. And they've also switched from an E3D extrusion system to a Bontex style extrusion system. And while I don't have those features on my Modix, I do have those features on my Lulzbot Taz Pro, which does perform at a pretty impressive industry quality. So I think that would bring the modern Modix up to a much higher performance level than what mine currently is, or I think the typical previous Modixes can do. If you are looking for a production slash industry 3D printer, you can even throw an IDEX extrusion system on there. So that actually puts two print heads on your gantry. So you can have one print head doing one plastic and then another one comes in with a different filament or literally two print heads printing at the same time, which would increase your production rate. That's pretty cool. So over the past year, I've run into what I would expect to be the typical number of issues from random jams or calibrations. Um, again, I'm having issues with the Wi-Fi connectivity, so it's just dropping off the network, but I'm not really going to blame the printer for that one. And I've also had to make some modifications to make it work better for me. The first and the simplest just being that I didn't really like the door hinge that came with this. I found that the door frame just kept loosening up so it would come like unsquare. So I made different hinges as well as supporting brackets just to reinforce the doors and make them operate at a slightly better level. I've also added way more LED lights so that way it looks a lot cooler and it's easier to see while you're working on it, including submarine mode, which means I can flip this switch and make it go red while it's printing and that just looks pretty sweet. And because I have most of my 3D printers in the makerspace running at 2.85 filament, I modified the typical E3D head to feed 2.85, which also included drilling out the filament sensor, so that way I didn't have to buy different filament for my different printers. So this is now printing at 2.85 rather than the typical 175 filament. And with that, I had to upgrade the different filament feed system because the one that came with it just kept jamming and getting tangled. So I made a super simple system with some basic clips and a very industrial rubber band. But I will again say that the V4 has an upgraded filament rack and filament feed system, which looks a lot more robust. 
And also, I don't use my dual head at the same time. I don't really have the need to print multiple materials at the same time. So I put a 0.4 millimeter nozzle in the first extruder and then a 1.2 millimeter nozzle in the second extruder, not to print with them at the same time, but that way if I want to print parts that are rather high detail, I can print with one extruder and then very easily switch to my second extruder if I want to print something super fast. So I simply just literally switch between the extruders in a Cura, and also I just pull the harness for filament sensor one and plug it into filament sensor two. So I just have one filament spool and one sensor, but that's again for my own personal setup. And then just some other random things, like I found that the end stop switch bracket kind of broke, so I made a custom end stop switch bracket, and even just getting into the back of the printer is a bit of a pain. So I cut the panel so I can just easily slide the panel off without removing the whole electrical box. So that way I can just access the back of the printer for cleaning, maintenance, removing a stuck part, whatever it might be. If you do order one, a couple things I think you should definitely consider. I would get the new magnetic bed. So it's a magnetic flex steel bed. The main reason is not that I don't like the aluminum and PEI setup. I think it works fine. But getting all the way in the back of the printer is either a rather unflattering thing to do or you're sitting here waiting for the Z height to drop all the way just so you can reach your parts. And that's kind of tedious for not only part removal, but also again, maintenance and cleaning. So being able to pop the bed out, I would assume is much, much, much simpler and definitely something I would consider to do. I would also get the Modix power distribution system. I have multiple plugs coming out of this for the bed heaters, the actual motherboard and controlling, and even some grounding wires, depending on which printer you have. So I find that if my plugs aren't quite on the same circuit or in the correct loop, there's some type of glitch of a system where this kind of becomes unresponsive. So that not only causes some frustrating things, but also could be an electrical hazard if you don't get that right. So should you buy one? I would say if you have a strong technical capability and you don't feel like you're gonna be daunted or overwhelmed by the massive project that is building, tuning, and calibrating this thing, maybe. But I would again ask yourself, do you need build volume of this size in literally one solid part to do big things? Or can you break up your designs and your models across multiple printers? Because if you can, there are a lot of options on the market, ones that are probably pre-built and quite big that you can get yourself up and running at a much faster rate. I know plenty of people who have gotten overwhelmed with the challenges of getting started with 3D printing, especially with the kit or hobby 3D printer, that they become daunted by all the different tasks and then they lose interest because they're not finding success. And I can tell you that this will definitely cause that. But if you think you can handle it and if you're ready for the challenge, you're gonna find that you have an absolute beast of a 3D printer that can literally swallow your other ones and is the printer of all printers for making things of massive sizes. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you found my tips and my suggestions and my experience to be a bit helpful for you as you try to make these types of decisions, or at the very least that you found this video slightly informative and entertaining. Please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for future videos on my channel.